uh, discarded drug needles have become all too familiar in some cities. Now a new state bill aimed to create government sanctioned safe drug and sec injection sites. That bill would have allowed California counties to come up with the legal framework for those safe sites, including San Francisco, Alameda, and Santa Cruz counties. Supporters of the bill say it would reduce the number of overdoses and provide an easy entry point for drug and mental health treatment. Now, opponents argued that it may have an impact on crime in the neighborhoods around the sites. They also say the bill would further create tension between federal and local drug laws. We'll point out that that bill, though, died in this legislative session. And joining us now to talk about safe injection sites in San Francisco is Board of Supervisors President London Breed. This is a topic that brings in questions of health, public safety, and also the overall image, let's say, of San Francisco by saying that we want to do this. Why are we, are we considering this? We're considering it because right now doing nothing is just not an option. The reality is, you know, people don't know enough about what it could mean. I mean, we have these sites operating all over the country. I mean, not in uh, the United States, but all over the world. There are a number of sites I actually visited, one in Vancouver, to get a better understanding of exactly what is going on in these sites, who are the folks, how are they changing and saving lives. And just to be clear, they are saving lives. Over 3,500 lives saved in uh, uh, people referred to detox in Vancouver and no overdose deaths in those locations. But more importantly, we did a budget and legislative analyst report which showed that if we open one of these sites, we could save $3.5 million a year in the money that we spend on public health issues related uh, to drug overdoses. That would be sending the fire department out to try to revive them. I mean, the fire department, um, the cleanup, the other things that are involved. I got, I got to, I got to, I've got to be honest. When I talk to people about this, when they say, well, San Francisco has already has a safe injection site. It's called the city. It's called Civic Center. You go walking through there and people are openly shooting heroin or meth or whatever as police walk right on by. And they're dropping the needles right there on the ground. <laughs> And that's the problem. That's a whole nother public health issue. The fact that needles are all over the ground, not just in Civic Center, but all over the city and other neighborhoods where kids or anyone can get a hold of them, that creates a whole nother public health issue. And so we need to look at another solution. This, in, again, in Vancouver, has demonstrated that it actually can work to reduce the number of needles that you find in the street, to reduce the number of people that you see shooting out but shooting up out on the street. I can't help but, again, when I talk to people, they say, well, the city gives out, you know, millions of needles a year as a health issue to try to solve uh, the transfer of diseases by this. They wind up being discarded on the streets. We basically made it, it's not that illegal to shoot up or possess the drugs. So we've kind of sanctioned this behavior. And now are we trying to just control it? So it's, just to be clear, Phil, I mean, you know, if someone uses drugs, they're going to get access to drugs. Okay. They're going to get access to needles. It's going to happen. It's estimated by the Department of Public Health that here in San Francisco, we have over 22,000 people who inject drugs in this city. And so we, as a public health concern around things like HIV, hepatitis C, and other issues, we have to come up with good solutions that are going to help now, address this issue. Because they're going to do it whether we want them to or not. Okay, so you are studying this issue. I think, I get the feeling from you, you're still sort of back and forth on it. But if you do decide to do it, uh, let's take the laws off to the side, and we go and do what San Francisco does, which is usually be the first. Where are you going to put it? What so, neighborhood is going to get this? So as you know, in April, I got legislation done to uh, develop a task force to study the All issue. Right. We brought together co experts and community members. What's most important is we collect the data, we educate the public, and then we make the decision. According to the task force, their suggestion is that we look at locations where this is already happening. Like, for example, areas like Civic Center, where we know that there's a significantly high yeah. number of users of, of, of drugs in that particular area. You're going to put one in City Hall then? Um, <laughs> I, you know, see, Phil, you always do that. But, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. We got to do something. Right now, wh what's the alternative? What are the other solutions? You know, I, I had not approached this thing thinking, oh, I'm going to be really into it. I'm just, I just need to make sure that I educate myself, we educate the public, and then we decide whether or not this is a good solution. And if we do it and we move forward, 
If it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll try something else. All right. Well, I've got to do something right now. What we're doing is we're training librarians on how to handle overdoses. <laughs> That's how epidemic the problem is. Thank you for joining us this morning, Supervisor London Breed. This issue is probably going to put you in the national forefront again. Again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile,